Okay, sharing screen. So the spin orbit coupling that um, uh, is really obvious in the, the sodium D lines are known as the sodium doublet. And uh, what that does is it shows what's called the Zeeman effect, as well as um, what drove Pauli crazy, Wolfgang Pauli, in figuring out that there must have been this some sort of intrinsic spin. Okay, so what and why are D lines? Um, again, totally ripped this off from um, the internet. So I'll post it on Moodle. Uh, Fraunhofer lines. So Fraunhofer lines are a set of spectral lines named for German physicist Josef von Fraunhofer. Um, really awesome it's history of Fraunhofer from the cosmos hiding in the light. Again, I recommend you watch it. Um, he's a poor little orphan boy who was like a, picked up by the king in a wonderful, wonderful story. Okay, anyway, sunlight comes out. You've got some of the um, corona of the atmosphere of the sun absorbing some light, and so not all of the light that the sun creates gets out. So there are some things that are absorbed. Sodium is in the sun, so sodium is absorbing lines. That's what we're seeing in these D lines. So Fraunhofer named them various lines. Um, anyway, so the D line is the one that we're looking at for sodium. Okay, so this is what the sun is made of. Um, so you've got the hydrogen line, so there's the Balmer lines. This is the n equals 3 to n equals 2 transition. There's the n equals 4 to n equals 2, n equals 5 to n equals 2, n equals 6 to n equals 2. And I think these are the passion, uh, no sorry, those are the Lyman series. Um, and those are the n equals number to number, I can't remember, not the Balmer. Anyway, so this represents, again, n equals two, 3 to n equals 2, so a small energy difference large wavelength, red line. Notice sodium. There are two. What? How are there two? So when um, the detectors got better, it used to be a fuzzy line, also known as a diffuse line, um, and it was hard to see the difference between them, so they just thought it was the diffuse line, whereas these were sharp. That name will mean more later. Anyway, so what causes the D line, or known as the sodium doublet? Um, so uh, the principal series were here, these ones, um, and then the, uh, the short leaders, so these little short ones were known as the sharp lines, um, and then the diffuse ones were these because they're thicker, um, and so those thicker ones right here too um, are known as the uh, diffuse because they're diffuse, um, and it, here you have in between 5895 and 5889, so really close together, the D1 and the D2. So this makes up the sodium doublet. Okay, how does spin orbit coupling relate to that? Let me show you. Oh, by the way, there's the sun. Again, I stole this from the internet. Um, so if you look at the solar spectrum, um, you see the sodium D line. Here's the emission spectrum of sodium. Everything else is black. Sodium D line. This is also a really great way that you can um, calibrate spectrometers is if you just get a sodium lamp, if you can't see the, um, the difference between the D lines, uh, you don't have that good of a detector. Um, for my physics ad lab, uh, that was one of our projects was to um, basically uh, calibrate, or not calibrate, but um, we had to basically put in the optical path ways to um, clean up the light and get rid of all the uh, extra noise so that you can really see a clear distinction of the D line. That's pretty cool. We use a bunch of polarizers and stuff. Okay, a Grodian diagram. This is epic. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to look at the transitions in angstroms. N equals 3, N equals 4, N equals 5, N equals 6. N equals 3 in the P. Uh, N equals, sorry, these are the yeah, so n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, but because of um, extra electrons, you're going to have uh, lifting, or not, so the degeneracy is going to be um, uh, broken from everything in the principal quantum number. Okay, so going from the n equals 3 to the p n equals 4, so you're having a difference in delta L of 1 because you're going from an s orbital to a p orbital. By the way, these are the term symbols. You're going to learn how to do that in like a day. Um, so this represents the p orbital angular momentum. You're in n equals 2 and you're in the 3 halves j value, which 
is, I don't know if you can see it, so that J that we just calculated, L plus S. Um, oh, I didn't give you all any examples. Stop, share, come back. Um, so if L equals two um, and S equals one half, um, so we're in a P orbital because L equals two. I'm sorry, we're in a D orbital because L equals two. Um, wait, is that right? Yeah. Um, and then S is equal to one half. That means that uh, J can equal um, uh, two plus one half. That gives us five halves. Or J can equal two minus one half. That gives us one half. Okay. So that um, did I do that right? Hang on. Pause for a second. It's the end of the day. Two minus a half is not one half. Three halves. I was very confused because I was like, that's not a P orbital, that's a D orbital. Go team. So there's a five halves and a three halves in the difference between the um, L plus S and L minus S. Three halves and five halves. Take home message. Let me go back to share screen. It'll make more sense in a second. Three halves and five halves. <laughs> Go team. So that's, those are the J's that I just calculated. So if I were in P orbital, I would have done a three half and a one half, which is why I was confused. Okay. Hopefully my confusion helps clarify things. What are we doing? Sodium D line. You're going from N equals three to N equals four to the, um, three halves state, or you're going from n equals three to, or sorry, the one s orbital, s, to the p one half, you are, or you have the spins are opposite each other, so angular momentum, electronic spin. So l, s, don't add together, they subtract, which means it's a p half, which means you're 3302.94. So your Wavelength is slightly larger because your energy is slightly lower. Here you have 3302, wavelength slightly smaller, energy slightly bigger. So going from three halves, that means that you've got L and S adding together to make a little larger J, which means your energy is going to be slightly higher. Go team! Epic! Okay. Other thing that's really cool. So this is, um, so you've got the principal series of the atomic spectrum. You've got the sharp series of the atomic spectrum. You have the diffuse series of the atomic spectrum and you have the fundamental S, P, D, F. Go team. So Peter Zeman figured this out. Um, that there were uh, intrinsic little bitty um, fine structure, is what this was called, uh, or a splitting of the spectral lines. And this is the Zeeman effect. This is what Polly was so confused about because the data showed a splitting. And Polly was like, what the hell are wave function L, M, and M sub L, N, L, and M sub L quantum numbers do not explain how you can have two different energy states. You have N, L, and M sub L identified with the right wave function. You should have just one energy, but this says that you had two. Why did you have two? Spin orbit coupling. Go team. So here is the specifics. Um, oh, it gives it to you. So L equals one, L, or S, L equals one, S equals a half. So when you add them, you get three halves. When you subtract them, you get a half. So this is the difference between P, three halves, um, two, because we're in the N equals two. Um, I think that's right. Gosh, I can't remember what that, I'm, I'm going to give that lecture next, so I'll review it. Um, but anyway, so see, you can, you can see that the, um, the sodium doublet uh, is caused by the slight difference due to the angular momentum adding and subtracting for the spin orbit coupling effect. Go team. And then if you even, uh, so weak magnetic fields, you're going to have quite a bit of coupling um, and you can cause even more coupling if you throw all these things in a um, strong magnetic field because then you're going to be coupling even more so in an external magnetic field which really wreaks havoc on everything. 
Odine. I hope you have enjoyed. I'll post these slides. Um, is there anything else? Oh yeah, they use this in stars. Yay! Um, so sodium D line image of the tail of the Hale Bop comet. Ooh, do y'all remember Hale Bop? You're probably too young. Were y'all even born then? Ooh, it was really cool. You could see it in the sky for days. It looked like there was about an impending doom asteroid coming at us. Um, it was like in 97, 98, I think, 1998. Go team. I remember seeing it from my driveway. So awesome. Okay. Um, go team. I hope you've enjoyed this rendition of spin orbit coupling. Next episode of PCAM Awesomeness will be on term sim. Although I think I might be doing a term symbols podcast. Whatever. Go team. Bye.